How Beavers Stole Fire from the Pines Once, before, there were any people in the world, the different animals and trees lived and moved about and talked together, just like human beings. The pine trees had the secret of fire and guarded it jealously, so that no matter how cold it was, they alone could warm themselves. At length, an unusually cold winter came, and all the animals were in danger of freezing to death. But all their attempts to discover the pine secret were in vain, until Beaver, at last, hit upon a plan. At a certain place on Grand Ronde River in Idaho, the pines were about to hold a great council. They had built a large fire to warn themselves after bathing in the icy water, and sentinels were posted to prevent intruders from stealing their fire secret. But Beaver had hidden under the bank near the fire before the sentinels had taken their place, and when a live coal rolled down the bank, he seized it, hid in his breast, and ran away as fast as he could. The pines immediately raised a hue and cry and started after him. Whenever he was pressed, Beaver darted from side to side to dodge his pursuers, and when he had a good start, he kept a straight course. The Grand Ronde River preserves the directions Beaver took in his flight, and this is why it is torturous in some parts of its course and straight in others. After running for a long time, the pines grew tired, so most of them halted in a body on the river banks, where they remain in great numbers to this day, forming a growth so dense that hunters can hardly get through. A few pines kept chasing beaver, but they finally gave out one after another, and they remained scattered at intervals along the banks of the river in the places where they stopped. There was one cedar running in the forefront of the pines, and although he despaired of capturing beaver, he said to the trees who were still in the chase, We can't catch him, but I'll go to the top of the hill, yonder, and see far ahead he is. So he ran to the top of the hill and saw beaver just diving into Big Snake River, where the Grand Ronde enters it. Further pursuits were out of the question. The cedar stood and watched beaver dart across Big Snake River, and gave fire to some willows on the opposite bank, and recrossed further on and gave fire to the birches and still on to the several other kinds of trees. Since then, all we have wanted fire have got it from these particular trees because they have fire in them and give it up readily when their wood is rubbed together in the ancient way. Cedar still stands alone on the top of the hill where he stopped, near the junction of Grand Ronde and Big Snake Rivers. He is very old, so old that his top is dead, but he still stands as a testament to the story's truth. That the chase was a very long one is shown by the fact that there are no cedars within a hundred miles upstream from him. The old people point him out to the children as they pass by. See, they say? Here is old Cedar, standing in the very spot where he stopped chasing beaver. The End